The inheritance feature can be used to capture different manufacturing states of a model. For example, I have the cast version of an engine block open, and I want to use the inheritance feature to capture the final machined version. To do that, I will create a brand new part. Let's call it engine block machined. And I'm going to click OK. And I've got my new model started using my default template. Now let's use the Get Data Overflow menu to create a merge inheritance feature. I'm going to use the Open button to select the cast version of the part. And for locating it, I'm just going to use the default constraint to align the imported geometry with the origin of my target part. So I will hit the check mark. This button on the dashboard will toggle it from a merge feature to an inheritance feature. And with the inheritance feature, if you go to the options tab, you can go to varied items. And there are eight different kinds of objects that you can change from the source model to the target model. Most likely you're going to use dimensions and features, but you can also do things like surface, to surface finishes and geometric tolerances for the different manufacturing operations. Now, for what I'm going to do, I'm actually not going to change anything, but I'm going to leave this as an inheritance feature because I like having all the features from the original model in my target part, and that way I can suppress them later on or change dimensions. And I always like to name this with the name of the part that I am referencing. Now I will hit the check mark. Now I'm going to show you a trick that I like to do. I like to distinguish between the surfaces that are cast and the surfaces that are machined. And to do that, I'm going to apply different colors to the surfaces. And the trick is I'm going to apply one color for the machined surfaces to the part and another color for all the cast surfaces to the outside surfaces of the model. To do that, let me show you a trick. I'm going to go to the View drop-down menu, and for the machine surfaces, maybe I want them to be an orange color. So let me go to the list in here and find an orange that I like. And I'm going to pick the Part node in the Model Tree, then click OK out of the Select dialog box. For some reason, it accidentally toggled between windows. Let's go back to the machined window. And now this part is orange. And I want to apply a different gray color to the outside surfaces for the cast surfaces. And I'll go to the appearances and scroll down in here and look for a gray that I like. I have a lot of colors in here. Let's use this one. Now, the problem is, when you're applying colors to different surfaces, you can select the surfaces one by one. There is a trick for a multi-surface select called Seed and Boundary, where you select one surface and then hold down the control key and select another surface. And it's supposed to grab all the surfaces from the seed surface out to the boundary, but that does not work for, for applying colors. So I'm going to show you a trick that you can use. Back in, I think it was Pro Engineer Wildfire 2001, they added this kind of datum feature called a reference feature that allows you to construct essentially your own intent objects. And I'm a big fan of intent objects. And the idea behind intent objects is rather than applying features like rounds or chamfers or draft to explicit edges or surfaces, you're applying them to the edges or surfaces associated with a feature. For example, if I go to the round tool and I want to apply it to an edge, if I tap the right mouse button, I can get the intent edges. In other words, the edges associated with this feature. Sometimes you don't get what you want from tapping the right mouse button, so the datum reference feature allows you to create your own intent objects. And I will click the reference command. And here from datum reference, I'm going to use the type drop-down list to change from intent chain to intent surface. And now I can use that seed and boundary. I can select a starting surface, my seed surface, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and pick another surface, and it grabs all the surfaces from the seed surface out to the boundary. There's one surface that's missing in here. 
no problem, I can hold down the control key and pick that other surface. And in this way, I am creating this datum reference feature that consists of all the outside surfaces of the model. Now, when I go to apply a color from the view tab, pick the color, I can pick this datum reference feature and it grabs all the outside surfaces of the model. So now my model looks like this dark gray color, but if I create any features that subtract material, it's going to reveal the underlying color. So I see that orange color for my machine surfaces. Let me show you an example of that. Let's go to the model tab. I'm going to use my, first off, make sure my axes are turned on and use my layers to show some of the axes from the model. Looking for, there we go, let's use this one. I'm just gonna show this axis to begin with. And I'm going to create one hole located on that axis. And hold down the control key. And for the depth of this, let's use a value of 0.5. For the diameter, let's use a value of 0.25. And when I hit the check mark, now it reveals that interior orange color for my machine surfaces. I'm going to put in an edit here right now. I'm going to create a bunch of other additional cuts in the model, holes and uh, different features to reveal those machine surfaces. And then when we come back, I'll show you one other way to create a cut in here. All right, so I have created a variety of different holes in here, some in patterns, some standalone. And again, by machining away that material, it's revealing the orange color underneath. And I'm going to show one other cut in the model. Let's say that there is some excess stock on this material that we would end up machining away. To do that, I am going to start off by creating a datum plane located on this surface. And right now, it's going into the part. Let's change this. Maybe we're going to make this a value of 0.1 and hit the check mark. And with my datum plane still selected, I can use the solidify command to remove material. That's a nice little trick. Uh, selecting a datum plane and solidify is a great way of doing a cut with a datum plane. And I'm happy with the side of material that's going to be removed. So I will hit the check mark. And that way we can see that we have the machining operation on this surface as well. And in this way, we've used an inheritance feature to bring in the original source model geometry. And then I use that reference feature in order to be able to apply different colors to the interior surfaces. And then I have my different cuts and other features for my machining that's taking place. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.